Hi, everybody. Yeah, morning. God bless you. I think you belong to the Church of the Later Day Saints. Because at 9 a.m. are the early saints, 11, PM, 11 a.m. is the Later Day Saints. <laughs> but the key thing is we are all saints in Christ. Praise the Lord, huh? Uh, I do not know how many of you who were at the first service. Uh, I try not to repeat myself, but I share with you the amazing love of God in my life. Okay? Uh, before I share anything, uh, let's have a prayer together. We thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace. The grace that taught us to fear Christ and live by that grace all the days of our life. We thank you for Living Century Brethren Church, a church that is filled and full and overflowing with grace, not only within, but overflowing to the community, especially in their commitment for CP work. Thank you for the leadership. Thank you for Lawrence, the senior pastor, and all who work alongside with him with one heart, one mind under the Lordship of Jesus. So now as I share, may the words be indeed from my heart to the hearts of all who are seated here. And may God be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I came from a non-Christian family. And even though I came from a non-Christian family, I was a free thinker. That means I don't believe in anything. I don't worship the idols that my parents worship. I don't bow down to all the idols or even the things that my parents did. I simply believe that I am a free thinker and I'm free to think. And in the early years of my life, I, I believe that I was a very self-righteous person. Self-righteous in the sense that I did what is right, I did what is law-abiding, I did what is good for the community. And even when I was a non-Christian, I visited old folks' home, orphanages, I do social work on my own simply because I love to help others, especially those who are weak and elderly. And because of my background, I always despise Christians because I expect them to do more. But the Christians that I know of, they can't even do the good works I was doing. So I was a self-righteous man and I don't think I need to embrace Christianity. But God changed my mind. First, I want to share with you my family first. Then I'll talk about my salvation. As the speaker, as the MC has said, I have two children and four grandchildren. Eh? My eldest daughter is Joanne. Okay? And then her eldest daughter, Sienna, is nine years. And then next to the one on the other side is Jimmy. He's my second son. She's 41. My son is 39. And then the eldest daughter is Ariola. And then Jonah is the youngest grandson. And next to my son, Jimmy, is Allison, my daughter-in-law. Nick is my son-in-law, carrying Eden. And then my wife, and then myself. A family of eight. This photo was taken during Chinese New Year time this year. I want now to look at the next picture. Okay. I show you this first church because when I was converted, I was saved on the 4th of October 1968. I went to this church on the 6th of October. It's a Presbyterian, Presbyterian Mini, Teochew, Mandarin, and Hokkien. Okay? So I went to this church on the 6th of October 
the third day after I became a Christian. I came to know Christ on the 4th of October, but on that day, it was a traumatic event to me. Okay? I remember that was a Good Friday. Yeah? I call it Good Friday, yeah? because it was a Friday when the school teachers were having an early break. Early break, yeah? And then the YFC has a special meeting on that day. And so we were walking down the main road to take our bus home. And here my classmate followed the three of us all the way and keep on pestering us to attend the YFC. But we refused. So as he was walking and pestering us, suddenly rain came down. Showers, rain, heavy rain came down. And we ran towards a group of schoolmates who was having a meeting at a YFC. And because we were late, we sat right in front. <laughs> the strange ways of God. And for the first time, for the first time, I heard the gospel. For the first time, I heard of a God who forgives our sins and loves us through His Son, Jesus Christ. I never knew God could love people. I, went, I never knew that Christ died for us. I never knew about that. It was the first time I heard, and hence, I was very touched, and God convicted me. And when the speaker gave an invitation for those to receive and trust in Christ and repent of their sins, I raised my right hand. In that moment, a very heavy burden left my heart. He prayed over us. After that, we were briefly counseled by a counselor, so to speak, and I was given a red book, the Gospel of John. Not Mao Zedong book, eh? the red book. Okay? So that was the first gospel I had. And it was that Gospel of John that led me to know about the life of Christ in the Gospel of John. And that's how I named myself John. Eh? Because I was reminded that John was the beloved disciple of Jesus. And I was touched by his love and I want to reciprocate, respond to his love. So I was called John. Okay? In fact, my name... Eh, the Chinese initial is LSK. Li Siu Kiang, the Chinese name. I put the name J, John in front. Eh? So if you have these four letters, J L S K, I always remind myself, J L S K is my spiritual destiny. J, Jesus, Lord, J L S, Saviour. Okay, come the king. So I always remind myself that I believe in a Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is my Lord, Saviour and coming king. And I live with that concept, that vision, that fear in my life. The day I became a Christian, I was very sincere and serious in my walk with Jesus. No play, play. I told you, fourth, I came to know Christ. On the sixth, I went to church, Glory Presbyterian Church, until 31st December 1977, when I went to another church. I want you to know that the two verses that coloured my life was Philippians 1.21 and Matthew 6.33. For me to live is Christ. To die is gain. For me, this is my personal conviction, for me, not for others, eh, but for me, to live. To live means what? It's a very practical thing to live. live. For me to live is Christ. This is my philosophy. Christ. Christ. Everything I said, do, wherever I go, 
I must see Christ. And I used to coin this word. When you don't see Christ, you will see what? You will see crisis. Okay? When you and I face crisis, ask where Christ is. Has he left the throne of your life? Has he moved out of the situation? Have you pushed him away? Is Christ there? If Christ is not there, you and I will face crisis after crisis in life. So for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. To die is gain means what? Profit. Profit. Christians have no fear of death because death is what? Even better. Death is not a loss. It's a gain. Provided for me to live is Christ, to die is gain, is profit. So that was my conviction and life verse in Philippines 1.21. And I also believe in this verse, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Last time it was my righteousness, a self-righteous person. But I learned to know that I am to seek God and his kingdom and righteousness first. And all these things will be added unto you. All these things will be added unto you. For me, include one. He added a wife for me. And I seek him. I don't have to think of a girlfriend or life partner. God sent her into my life. Later on, I will share with you how God used me to meet my girlfriend who became my life partner. Okay? My salvation story was I trusted Christ at the first time I believed. And my my girlfriend was my first and only girlfriend. And she is my life partner till today. So when you put God first, when I put God first, everything I tell you, uh, God will take care. Okay? So the next picture will show you my time in Bible college. When I became a Christian, I was a very serious Christian. Very serious in the sense that I attended prayer meeting after one month being a Christian. I was followed up by a brother in Christ for three years every week. And that's how I grew. So the, the things that helped me to grow from faith to faith, strength to strength, glory to glory was what? Prayer meeting, follow up, and my own personal devotion devotion, reading the Bible on my own. I, you know, as a young Christian, I don't know what to do, right? So when I got my own Bible, I bought a Bible, I read from where? Beginning. Huh? And it was a King James Bible. From Genesis, right to the end, Revelation. And I used a red pen to underline the verses that speak to me. So I was reading my Bible page by page, chapter by chapter, right to the end. And I tell you, without fail, up to today, I read my Bible at least three to four times a year. It can be done, no? Tell the person on your left and right, you can read through the Bible at least once a year. See? I, I hope you do it, huh? I will check on you. <laughs> you see, if you calculate the chapters of the Bible, they are all together 1189. means 1189 chapters. You round it up to 1200 chapters. In four months, you have 120 days. You finish the Bible if you read 10 chapters a day. 10 chapters a day. Eh? I'm saying reading only, no? Not, not study, eh? study is another matter, okay? Just read through the Bible page by page, 
one day, ten chapters, in four months, you finish one Bible. And I did that all the years of my life. I used to tell people, don't ask how old am I. Don't ask that. Ask how many times I read the Bible. Huh? Because reading the Bible is very important. Because the Bible tells you, faith comes by hearing, by reading His words. And when you don't read, when we don't read the Bible, your faith will not come to you, will not increase, will not grow. Want to have more faith? More Bible reading. More and more faith? More and more Bible reading, especially if you can use different versions. And you will be enriched, empowered, inspired, instructed by the Word of God. So that was, that was what I did in my early days. And then, as time goes on, my pastor and leaders noticed me. Huh? They noticed me that I was growing and I was helping in many areas. I did many things as a youth leader, as a Sunday school teacher, as a whatever volunteer in every area of my ministry. I just did things automatically. Okay? I mentioned earlier that I went to church on the 6th of October. And when I went to church on the 6th of October, the church service start at 7.30 a.m. And I reached there 7 a.m. Give me a clap. You know why? Because today many of us go to church late. We find go to church at 7 a.m. or 7 30 very difficult. But we forgot the psalmist says, Early will I seek thee. Psalm 63. Huh? Earn, earnestly will I seek you early in the morning. So I went to church very early. And as I was the earliest, I did the natural thing. Latecomers come, or people who came in later, I helped to give out bulletin, hymn books, and Bible to the worshippers. And I served God that way without being told what to do. But just do what you, we call it natural instinct. So I got involved in serving, and from there, I became involved in Sunday school. I taught the first Sunday school class was five boys. The following year, I taught the secondary school. And then the third year, I became a superintendent of the Sunday school. Huh? And then I became the chaplain of the school. That's how I, I, I grew. It's by involvement, it's by doing things that I make progression, leap, and leap forward in my service and spiritual walk with the Lord. And my pastor noticed I was so involved. One day, my senior pastor told me, you go full-time. You know, my pastor at that time, uh, when he was a senior pastor in my church, uh, he was a Chinese Hokkien pastor. At the age of 65, he came from China to serve in Glory Presbyterian Church. When I got to know him, he was 85. 85 years, he was my senior pastor. And so you can see that Lawrence, Lawrence is very young, no? Huh? He can continue to be your senior pastor for many, many, many years. Amen? Uh, when you say yes, but you must obey him. Huh? If not, he will give up easily. Huh? And I thank God that under Lawrence and his team, you all have been very obedient. Huh? The Lord used him to continue the work, establish the work, and build up the work in Living Sanctuary Britain Church. Keep up your good work. Early in the morning service, I told them, as I walk into your church, what do I see? I see more than the physical thing, the furniture, the features, the band, the choir, the rooms, whatever. I see more than that. I see what? I see blood. I see tears. 
as his sacrifice. He took a lot of blood, sweat, tears, sacrifice to build up this church. For you to be seated here in a comfort, aircon environment, you owe it to God and the leaders and generations ahead of you. Give them an applause. <laughs> huh? Next time you see somebody, you ask them, how long have you been here? And they tell you, oh, 20 years ago. Give them a pat. Say, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for giving. Thank you for your blood to build up this church. And we, the younger generations or the people that come after them, must continue the good work that God has begun in and through your leaders and members ahead of you. Well done. So, I told you about my Bible college. My pastor told me to go. And then I asked myself, how come uh, he tell me to go full time when I didn't tell him anything? Then another few weeks, a deacon told me, he called me by the name of SK, SK, leave your job, go full time. Again, I asked myself, why, uh, God, why did you tell me again to go full time when I didn't talk to anyone about full time ministry? And the third occasion was a church from a BP church pastor. He was speaking to a group of people and I was there and he speaking very loud and clear. He said, SK, leave your job, go full time. That was indeed loud and clear. And with that, I prayed. I said, God, if three persons tell me to go full time, then you must give me three signs. Three signs, three confirmations. The first confirmation was my church had about 1,000 members then and 30 elders and deacons. So I told church, I told the Lord, the 30 elders and deacons must all be of one heart and mind and agreement that I am the right suitable candidate to go full time. Of course, they're happy lah. Say, go, go, go. Huh? So, 30. Six. Second thing I asked God was, my company must release me from my work. At that time when I work, we were bonded. And the condition of the bond is, if you don't fulfill the bond, you must return some payment to them. So, I told God, if that company can release me without any payment, I know you will want me to go full time. So I approached the manager and he told me, any proof that you are accepted by Bible College? So I showed him the letter. The letter said, you have been accepted as a candidate for three months. So I showed him the letter and then he told me, in that case, we will only release you for three months. So I went. After my three months, the college said, you can continue the rest. And with that letter, I sent to the manager. He said, okay, now we fully release you. No need to pay any bond. So God answered prayer. Okay. The third sign was more challenging and difficult. It was for my father. My father, when he knew that I was a Christian, he told my brothers and sisters, I have become mad, crazy. He said, John has become self, mad. To become a Christian, I am mad. So he told my brothers and sisters, don't follow me, don't follow me. So I asked my father and mother, I'm leaving my job and go full time and I want your blessing. My father paused, think through, and then he said, up to you, Lord. So he let me go. Huh? He let me go, and so I could go to Bible College. But after one, two months when I was in the Bible College, my father complained to my mother. 
是啊，必须要啊，有工作卖做去读册啊，哎，有工作了卖做做 pastor is a what church mouse 啊 ，be a be a pastor in those days is what poor church mouse okay。So my my mother, after hearing this complaint from my father, my mother wanted to him, keep quiet. You already given the permission. Don't change your words. So I continue with my study in Bamba College. So the power of a woman's voice, eh? <laughs> so when I was in Bamba College. Even though thirty elders and deacons agreed that I am the right person to go full time, but I received zero support financially from them and from the church. The church did not support me at all, not a single cent. And so, whatever savings I have, I use up. I have no money. So at times when I go to Baba College. I would take a bus that will bring me about one to two km before I reach the destination, and I will walk there, walk to college. Because college is in the morning. By one pm, we finish our lectures, all this thing. Afternoon, we go home, and in the afternoon, I will walk all the way home about five km. Hungry, but the heart. Filled with joy and contentment, because I knew by then that to be a pastor, to be a servant of God, you are to be like Paul, to be like Jesus. Jesus said, "What foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have nowhere to lay his head." So I accepted suffering, experiences of lack, hunger, poverty, as my. Calling, but as I said that, I want the rest not to take it seriously. Okay, you know you won't go full time, no. No, that is only me. Huh? So don't follow me in that example. That is an extreme example. But that's what I went through. Huh? So I went through for eighteen months, lack of food, lack of money, and then when I'm in Bible college, huh, I have nothing to eat. Uh, no, no food for uh, refreshment. You know what I do? Drink a lot of water. Yum, soy power. I just drink water to keep myself filled and full. And if you see my photo in those days, I was a very skinny person. Very, very skinny person. Why? Not enough food. Not enough nutrition. Suffer all those physical. Lack of food and nutritions, but I was happy. I was joyful. I never complained. So when I almost finished my study, I found a girlfriend, a fellow student in Bamba College. How did I find her? Do you want to know the story? Ah,、uh, you want to know, huh? I tell you, when you hear this story, ah,、uh, you won't want to do what I do, you know. Okay, so the first time I came to know this girlfriend, Kathleen, was in answering to her call to be an advisor to a inter-school Christian fellowship. Ah,、uh, inter-school Christian fellowship is from the Scripture Union. So she was sharing at the chapel. We need advisor. We need advisor. She mentioned about three times. So one day I asked her, "Have you un- found an answer to be getting a advisor for your club?" She said, "No." So when she said no, the next thing she asked was, "Are you interested?" So my answer was no. <laughs> And then she asked, "Why?" Because I came to know Christ through YFC, and I am only interested in a YFC club, not the ISCF club. And then she give a very wise answer, you know. YFC, ISC, it's the same. Only different name, only it's the same. Student work. Oh, okay. So I told her, okay, let me see where is the club. 
So she brought me there to the club. And I told God, if it is from you for me to be advisor of the club, show me a sign. Okay? So the first time I went to the club with her was, I saw the students, and one of the students was from my church, Glory Presbyterian Church. So I felt at home, I felt confirmation from God, yeah, I should be involved in this club. So as months goes by, I have problems with the club members, students, all these things. I turned to the former advisor, huh? Kathleen, and asked her for help, all these things. And she, she answered, helped me a lot. So I begin to open my eyes. Uh, yeah, all these fellows are very helpful, eh? spiritually very concerned, all these things. Eh? So I begin to have an interest in her. And so being a spiritual man, I wrote her a love letter. <laughs> you know how I write a letter? I put the love note in a book in the SBC library. You can follow me and this, huh? Hey, read this book very good, no? <laughs> but inside there is a letter. And so open the book and read, and there was a note. Do you know what I want? I write there. Uh, this part you may not want to do it, lah, huh? So I, I wrote one sentence only. Dear Kathleen, can I love you? <laughs> huh? She got a shock. <laughs> huh? she, they told, she told me, who can stop you from loving me? Correct. <laughs> but. But I wrote this, can I love you? Why? Because I believe uh, I must speak the truth in love. Don't waste time. Uh, if you're not interested in me, <laughs> you're not interested in me, don't waste time. Sigh here. <laughs> Correct? And so the next morning, she returned a, a note to me, and she said, yeah, you read the note I, I write. I open it. Answer was no. <laughs> so my heart dropped. Then I think through. I think she gazy one. Uh. <laughs> so three months time later on, I wrote her another letter. Huh? And I passed her the note. I pray about it, I wrote the letter and then give to her. And the next day, she replied me, Yes, but I need explanation. So we met in the class, and she explained why. Huh? So to cut the long story short, the Lord confirmed our relationship, and then we went dating during our, my last day in Bible college. You know, in those days at Bible college, huh, you study means study, you know. no dating. You, know. you cannot look at another girl or boy. You cannot. The principal will go after you. Huh? So, I graduated in 76. At the end of the term, one more month before I left school, I had to write a note to tell my principal and my dean that we are getting steady. Because at that time, I was in SPC, we call it Taka, no? and I was, I was the chairman of the student body, and she was the chairwoman of the student body. So we have to set a very good example before the whole college that has maybe about a few hundred students. So we were, by example, set to the rest of the student body. So that was the time we were in Bible College. So I served in my church for one year, Glory Presbyterian Church, I was trained in the English department. I do Hokkien work, Teochew work. I do uh, Mandarin work, huh? and of course, some English work. So I was, it was very tough serving in the morning, afternoon, and night in Glory Presbyterian Church. So one day, I tell myself, I am trained for the English work. Why am I suffering in the Hokkien, Mandarin Hokkien ministry? Many. 80% of my time in Hokkien, Mandarin, and Teochew work. 
So I told the Lord, send another worker. Because I believe in being responsible. When I leave this church, I cannot leave the church empty or with no continuation in the work. So I told God, if you really want me to leave Glory Presbyterian Church, send somebody to replace me. And God did. He sent a couple from Baba College who can do Hokkien, Mandarin, English, that you work. A couple to replace me. And so I left Glory Presbyterian Church with clear conscience, with God's confirmation. And then at the same time, Lina Ong from Bethesda Franca knew that I was going on with Kathleen Lee. He invited me to come and see the work in Franca and said, John, this is all totally English. You can come and serve as pastoral worker in Franca. So with that, I left 31st of December 1977 and on the 1st of January 1978, I moved to Franca. This is the church I went. I was there until the 1st February 2002 before I started River of Life Community Church. It was Bethesda Franca who tell us, new work, oh, church planting, outreach at Sengkang. So they were telling that about three times. And I tell God, God, are you speaking to me? Huh? Because at that time, I happened to have an apartment, a flat. So I said, Lord, yes, I'm prepared to use my house as a base for ministry. So Franka was in agreement that I should do the work in Sengkang. They were debating about two methods of outreach. The first method was transplant 80 members into Sengkang and rent a bungalow to do the ministry. That was the first option. The second option was what I suggested. Starts from zero. Me, my wife, and no one else. Zero. So of course the church start to agree with my method. Lah. Zero. No need to cost anything. Wa. No need to rent a bungalow. Wa. No need to use premises. Wa. No need. Wa. So use my house. Huh? So we did by prayer walking. Huh? This is not my house. This is a house church. Huh? My house was apartment. My apartment, I like it very much. It was an executive apartment. We used it for a cell group and later on we used it for church worship. The first time we had worship service was on July the 29th at the evening time, 5 p.m. The first meeting when we have an inaugural meeting was on the 29th July. We have 90 people, 90 adults and children squeezed into my house, fully aircon, and we have our first worship service. We do it once a month, so July, August, September, for three times we have evening service. Then the community I had, the community felt that if we only do it in the evening, we will not grow. So we must do it in the morning. In the morning. So to do it in the morning, we have to rent a house or terrace house for our regular weekly Sunday worship service. We did that. Eh? So we did that for two years. Then we moved to another bungalow opposite this one, the church, which is number 17. The one you saw on the, you see in the picture is number 19. We bought this. We were in number 17 for two years and then we bought number 19 from the year 2006 until now. The story of how this church was built and bought was very, very interesting. At the time, we were about 70 members, including children. And we trust God, God, if this is your will for us to buy this building to use as church premises, we will trust you. So at the time, the owner wanted to sell at 2.2 million, but I talked to him, bargained with him, and I talked to the owner. We are buying this not for investment, it's for church work, for religious reason. So if you sell us at 1.8, we will buy. The agent said, no, not possible. 
from 2.2 to 1.8 is a big jump, cannot. So I told him, quote in the Bible verses, you know, with God, nothing is impossible. <laughs> huh? So true enough, I told him, if you agree to sell at 1.8, I will give you the 1%, 18,000 option money. He said, no, I must bring up my, my uh, the landlord. So he rang up. Later on, he said, yes, the owner decided to sell to you for one dollar Point eight million, and I wrote down my personal check of eighteen thousand. That's all I have. Give to him. After that, uh, I realized it was a nightmare. You know? how to raise one point eight million in three months? So my wife looked at me, how to do it? I said I only know one method. Kneel down and pray. He knelt down, we pray, we pray and pray. And the Lord impressed in my heart to form a committee. And the committee came with a solution how to raise funds. They talk about giving, calculation of how much people give, and then the rest borrow from the bank. Then I look at it. No borrowing. No borrowing. 1.8. 1.8 cash. No borrowing from outside, from anyone, no appeal from any organization. 1.8 asking God and examine our own hearts. And so we did that. In less than three months, we raised 1.8 to buy the building and use it as a place of ministry and worship. And with 200 more thousands for renovation, and Pastor Lawrence uh, helped us to, Lawrence Chow helped us to do the transaction. So your senior pastor has a part to play in the building of RLC. Thank him for that. <laughs> so if you ask me now, can you raise this money? I said, cannot. Why? Because it's not by human effort, it's by faith. By faith. So when the committee formed, the committee formed to raise fund, they call it BF, Building Fund Committee. I said, no, 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 that's not a nice name. Name it FBF, Faith Building Fund. God is going to raise our corporate and personal faith as we raise up this $1.8 million. And we did that. Our faith level increased, increased, increased. We have members who give one whole year of their salary. We have others who give 10 months of their savings. We have others who sold their gold and exchange in the money. We have students who have saved up a lot of angpao, all surrendered into the building fund. Without me asking them to give, asking God, searching our hearts, and we did that. I told the church openly, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, He has given us the money. The good news is that 1.8 million has been raised. The bad news is it is in your pocket. Obey, respond to His faith, respond to His calling. Respond to what God is speaking to you. And so the members did that. So that was how RLC started. Raise the fund and the work continued. So friends, I want you to know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. When we have faith, we please God. When we have faith, diligently seek God, huh? we will have his favor and blessings and we will do what is possible. With God, all things are possible. Notice the Bible didn't say, to God. To God, all things is possible. That is not found in the Bible. The Bible only says what? With God. 
Faith means what? You and God, God and you. Faith means what? There is a relationship. With God, all things are possible. You must agree with God and God agree with you and the thing can be done. And so that's how RLC was birthed, sustained and continued even up to today. God has used us not only to do work locally, but by His grace, we did some work in Myanmar, Cambodia, Indonesia and Brazil. I call it C-I-M-B. Yeah? C, Cambodia, I, Indonesia, M, Myanmar, B, Brazil. So as a church, we have missions and supports in these four countries, Cambodia, Indonesia, Myanmar, and Brazil. And I always tell my members, you know, you don't look at yourself with only 120 and 150 members. You look outside your church, the river of life flow into Cambodia, Indonesia, Myanmar, and Brazil. And today, God has honoured our faith. And I always tell my church, the needs outside are greater than the needs inside. And so we challenge the church to give, to give and give and support mission. During my times, I set aside 50% of what we receive for mission. 50% of our offerings, tithes and whatever we have, 50% go out to Cambodia, Indonesia, Myanmar and Brazil. And God has honoured us for being generous in giving to others, even though internally, inwardly, we may have need. But the need outside is always greater. So church, you have your story. You have your testimony. But I believe that if you want your testimony to be strong, serious and sincere, you have to walk with God consistently. Consistently. The day I became a Christian, I never stopped going to church. I never stopped praying. I never stopped having my devotion. I never stopped be follow up and follow others and reach out to others. After I became a Christian, I started seriously to do evangelism. Evangelism. And in my former Glory Presbyterian Church, after Sunday worship in the afternoon, we would go out to the neighborhood, door to door, to do what you call today CP work. Knock at the door. We do evangelism. And I formed that group called G-E-T. G, glory. E, evangelism or evangelistic. G-E-T, glory evangelistic team. We give out flyers, give out tracts, give out whatever we can and talk to the neighbours and bring them to the Lord. And I believe that helped us, helped me to be a Christian that is serious, sincere, and following after Christ all the days of my life up to today. Up to today. Up to today, I believe that God sustained me because I honour Him. I honour Him. And I believe that I must honour Him in every sense of the word. Honour Him financially, honour Him spiritually, honour Him in every area, and God has kept His word for me. Though I became as a struggling person in the walk of financial needs, but God has kept me, sustained me, and blessed me and my family more than I can think, ask or imagine. And today, I have no lack. I have no lack. I have been blessed in every sense of the word, physically. And God has given me one gift. Many people don't like to have this gift, but I have this gift. The gift of giving. The gift of giving. 
you know, when I have any money, when I have anything, that money I have in my hand, I receive freely from Him, I surrender to Him. Freely I receive, freely I give. So if you ask me what are my spiritual gifts, I would say one of them is what? Giving. Giving. In fact, the problem with me is I cannot keep money. Huh? Any money come to me, they just disappear. They just are given to others. Huh? Given to people who have needs. Giving to people who are in greater needs. I will just give away. Why? Because not, they are not my money. It's his. His money. So I would give freely, share freely, and I don't hoard anything. Just like I give you an example. Lately, the government is very kind, correct? They give the people of Singapore, each one about at least 300 and 400. They call it uh, what call allowance. Huh? They call it the inflation allowance, whatever. Okay? I received 700. So I told God, I don't need that money. What I did, I, out of that 700, I gave 500 away. I gave 500 away. Because I said I don't need that. But I used that to give 500 away to a missionary. A missionary who has needs. Others have needs. I have friends, so many friends in mission field, they need funds. They need finance. And who are the people who can give? Only God's people. So in Australia also, eh, we give, we give, we give. And the more we give, we discover that we have no lack. God has honoured our giving and lifestyle all these years. So I want to share and conclude with these words. For me, to live is Christ. To die is gain. So what do you live for? Do you live for Christ? Can you say with Paul, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. When we fail to live for Christ, to die is loss, a big loss. I pray that you will continue to know that every day, every moment you live, is Christ, His grace. And when we live for Christ, we live by grace, we make sure our life and giving is not a disgrace. Save by grace, live by grace, don't live or give by disgrace. Let us bow our heads and pray. I do not know your situation, but I pray that you will want to be more committed in your faith, in your walk, in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Christ gave his life, his all to you and me. We are to do likewise. We are to do what Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. We cannot give less than what Christ has given to us. So ask ourselves this question, how many more years do you want to live? What is the lifespan you want? How long do you want to live? Is it to make more money, to buy a second home, to buy a new car, or to go overseas for holiday, or to do something that is mainly for self, self, self? Or do we say, for Christ? Christ, Christ. Or we call it, do the God thing, not the good thing. Many times we do the good thing is the wrong thing. But all the times when we do the God thing, that is always the good thing. So I pray that you will respond to God and do the God thing. So at the count of three, if you feel you want to live for God, and do the God thing in your daily life, at the count of three, you want to do the God thing, you just stand up and I pray. Okay? At the count of three, you think and you are clear that you want to do the God thing, at the count of three, you stand up and dedicate yourselves to God for the God thing. So one, 
two, three. Stand wherever you are. Lord, you are the God who sees from on high. Though you are in the high and holy place, yet you say you dwell in the hearts of those who are humble. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who stand here because they humble themselves. They want to do the God thing. They want to love the God who so loved them and that they will devote their lives, all the rest of their life, to serve Christ, to live for Christ. And when they live fully for Christ, they can say with Paul, for us, for me, to live is Christ. And if death come to us, it's a gain, not a loss. So honour my brothers and sisters that they live well, not for themselves, but for Christ and for your kingdom. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as in heaven. Let your will be done, Lord. You honour their faith as they commit themselves, their families, their children, their all to the one who gave them all. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his countenance towards you and grant you his solemn peace. Amen. Amen.